29 alpha, take one. Mark. I think that it's a love story. The hierarchical relationship that's really coming from the culture, um, from Lao culture, so that makes the sister authoritarian and a bossy pants. Show me a fucking heart. And a brother who is really in the position of, um, even though he's male, having to submit. Um, even the actor said that that was unusual. He said, why would I take this? And I said, because you were a dutiful brother, a younger boy, and this person was effectively your mother. I, I think, you know, she is so powerful, and um, I love that she is there for him no matter what, and the love is a hard love. It's not necessarily like, I'm gonna hold you and coddle you. It's like, no, I'm gonna make sure you, you thrive. I'm gonna make sure you come back just as you know, successful as you were in boxing, but you're gonna do something different. I think that's the hardest lesson and the most important lesson is that getting along means fighting. Getting along means not speaking. Getting along means acts of repair. It's not just magical. So I think that they do that, and they do that in, a, in the story in a beautiful way. In many ways, it's not just a story about acceptance, it's also, again, about survival, and survival requires reinventing yourself constantly as the circumstances require. You know, Dara was, I mean, she, she came to Canada and she had to, like, open up a salon. It wasn't that she desired to do that. It's not that she loves doing nails. She just knew that that's what she had to do in order to survive and to provide for her family. And then Raymond himself, he was a boxer before. His, his dream was to be a champion boxer, but that dream was slowly crushed and he has to rebuild himself. He has to realize that life goes on and that in order to survive, dreams are great but you have to be tethered to the ground in a way. That struggle, that, you know, of like, now what? You know, um, really did strike me. I, f I find it really interesting to, to have a story about someone who is dealing with that, but also trying to rebuild his life, right? Because um, he was a pro boxer, and now he doesn't know what he'll do, um, having that taken away from him. He's the softer one, you know? Um, and he knows she loves him. Like, she, he just knows that. He doesn't, he doesn't need her to say it. She does it. She shows her love. I, I mean, I just think those, the, those two characters are, are beautiful. You don't usually see, like, a woman written this way and a man written this way as, as a relationship for brother and sister. It's, it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting to watch. You know, he's not able to fight, um, and he's literally, his career is literally on the ropes. Um, and so his sister gives him a place, and he has, she coaches him in the way that his boxing coach would have coached him. You know, she, she's really hard. You call that, you know, blob of nail polish a heart, like, fix it. And so she steps in, offers him a place, becomes a coach, and then at the end, He's been supported to adapt and he has found a place. And when he walks back into the nail salon, we understand that for the time being at least, he has chosen that place. And that for me is a really powerful moment. The film demonstrates that it takes a sister and a village to accommodate um, a mental health challenge. I have a few people in my life who have sustained concussions and um, have had brain injuries um, and you don't know that someone has that happening inside them um, and because you can't see it, right? It's not a disability you can see. I really wanted to show, and this is important to the concussion specialists that I'm working with, that you can get a, a head trauma you can rest 
and you may not come back to your sport. You may, lots of people, they heal, but in the case of Raymond, he becomes um, a very skilled nail technician, in fact. Um, the, the clinician that I worked with, Elise Shumway, said that would be a perfect job because you don't have to speak a lot, you can choose to be silent, and you can focus on one task. So it was the story was credible about the journey of a person with a brain injury into a new profession or career. Cultural aspect also is something very, um, you know, ex exciting to be part of because um, I, I, I don't know very much about the Lao culture. I thought that was an interesting um, dynamic in Dara, is that she swears in English, but she doesn't in Lao. And I think that's a, that's a fascinating aspect of, of that duality that she lives in, you know, uh, in, in two worlds. Lao's all about family. Like, you do not let family, you know, suffer alone. And to, for her to take in her brother with open arms like that, that's exactly the Lao community. You know, no matter how far or how long you've been away, home will always be home. And I just love how the director took so much interest and so, um, how do you say, like, she was very meticulous to make sure that um, the lead um, actor can speak Lao authentically. And also, when I was coaching her, I heard the tape. Uh, so just knowing that they went out of their way to get uh, a fluent speaker, you know, from Laos to be able to do that to help the lead actress, I thought that they went beyond, um, like, um, to to have this to be authentic as possible. And, like, if you need to move it tighter, she can be closer. Like, you can move the body. Okay. I know, but it's she's like watching from like she a, like is she's... oh my god, Marlene is brilliant because she again she has these desires, she has these dreams, and she is able to balance having those dreams with confronting the small little obstacles that she faces. But she perseveres; she just keeps forging on, and it's really amazing to see. And I think that's part of the reason why she was able to get funding, it's part of the reason why she was able to get this going at all, put this team together, is because she understands that when a door closes, it's not the end, it's just a redirection. And so she's like, okay, well, I gotta go somewhere else. And I find that quality about her very inspiring. And I think that makes a great leader, a great director. It's someone who has a vision. She's very meticulous and she knows what she likes, but she's also, open to collaboration and not just open to it, she actually loves it. That's how she loves to work, is to collaborate with people. I am blessed to have worked with and continue will, you know, will continue to work with Laura Norton. And Laura said from the outset, we are going to create an incredible um, feeling on set. So crewing up was, um, was phenomenal. It was like, um, the hand's gonna be just here, meeting right? people from every walk of life and a lot of people resonated and that was important to us. Um, some people had experience as refugees, some people had distinct experiences um, as immigrants, but all, most people on the set um, had a kind of connection to the story. Patrick is... Um, I mean, he just has so many tools in his toolkit, uh, as well as incredible generosity and sensitivity. But yeah, he literally moved from the nail salon <laughs> and was a credible professional fighter. And that is a span that any other actor would be afraid of. Patrick did awesome, yeah. Patrick's great. I know he has a little background in Taekwondo, which always helps, but he really brought that boxing spirit and I thought he, I thought he looked really good. Yeah, Patrick and Mustafa had a really good chemistry, really good dynamic. Whenever you're doing fight choreography, it's like you're doing a dance, so you have to be dancing with your partner. And luckily they had some rehearsal at our school and uh, they brought it today, they did awesome. We hope that people walk away with the resilience that he, like humans have. Um, you know, that one dream can turn into another. Um, and it's hard. It's not like, oh, that's easy. I'll just 
dream a new dream. It's not like that. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of upheaval and a lot of like inner conflict and, and, and learning and that kind of thing, but that you, you can get through it and find another way to stay one excited about your life and, and hopeful and, and um, enjoy your life still, even though something that you really cared about was taken away from you. So I do hope it's, um, that people see that, you know, the resilience that, 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 that people have. Cutting, cutting. That was great. Oh, yeah. You happy, Schmappy? Schmappy. Are you happy? All right. Everyone's happy? Schmappy. Oh, camera. Yeah. That's, we're good? Yeah. All right, so that's a wrap on day two. That's a wrap on our uh, Manny Petty station over here at the salon. Woo! Why are you why why? Why are you film? Why are you film me LK? Um there's